Okay, so this is the um, first linear algebra lecture. We're going to start by solving systems of equations with augmented matrices. So what's a system of equations? Linear system of linear equations. What's the reduction method? Augmented matrices and row reduction can columns be moved and, um, and that's it. So what's a system of equations? A linear system of equations is something like this. We have a bunch of variables, x1, x2, and x3. <clears throat> the multiplied by constants, those are the coefficients, and the sums are equal to constants, right, when we add them together. The variables are raised to the first power, there's no sines or cosines or exponentials or logs or anything like that, just variable times number plus variable times number plus variable times number equals number. And we want to be able to solve them. What are x1, x2, and x3? So there's a number of different ways to do this. We're going to use the reduction method. Um, and so we want to get, so reduction, this is what we're going to do here. Uh, the rules for reduction, and you've probably seen this before when you had to find intersections of lines, but the rules for reduction are that two equations can be added together, and the result can take the place of one of the two previous equations. An equation can be multiplied by a constant, and equations can be written in any order. You don't, it doesn't matter what order they're written in. <clears throat> so what we want to be able to do is solve this system of equations by reduction. And I'm going to write on the left side of the paper here, and I'll come back on the right side and to do something else in a little bit. So what I want to do So the first goal is get all coefficients of x1 the same. And so the same or negatives of each other, right? So I can do that by, I can multiply any kind of equation by a constant, right? That's one of the rules I can do. So I can multiply the second equation by a constant and leave the other two alone. And that gives me this. Oops, sorry. That should be a six. That should be a four. And that's 10, 2x1 plus 7x2 plus 4x3 equals 8. So what I did is I multiplied the middle equation by 2, changing my coefficients to 2, 6, and 4, and changing the answer solution to 10. Great, so now all the coefficients of x1 are the same. And what I'll do is I will subtract second. Uh, so, oops, I want to keep that there. I'm going to subtract line one from line two and then from line three and uh, replace with the subtraction. Okay, so what does that mean? We're gonna leave the first row actually alone. So that'll just be 2x1 plus 8x2 plus 3x3 equals two. I'm gonna subtract the first row from the second row and write that down as my new second row. So 2x1 minus 2x1 is 0x1, so that's good. 6x2 minus 8x2 is minus 2x2. 4x3 minus 3x3 is plus 1x3. And then 10 minus 2 is 8. OK. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the third row. I'm going to take the third row, subtract the first row from it, and replace the third row with that subtraction. So 2x1 minus 2x1 is 0x1. 7x2 minus 8x2 is minus x2. 4x3 minus 3x3 is plus x3. And then 8 minus 2 is 6. So there is the first round of this. OK, and then I'm going to simplify a little bit. Um, I want to get rid of the coefficients on the x2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the middle row by minus 2, by minus 1, 
Ando by minus one and the bottom row by two. So I'm still not tinkering with the first equation. So that just stays where it is. And now I've got two X two minus X three equals minus eight and minus two X two plus two X three equals 12. And this is a two, and that's just a blob. Okay. Good, why did I want to do that? Well, again, I want to get the same coefficient on my x2s here. And now I'm going to add second and third lines, third, and replace the third row. And that gives me 2x1 plus 8x2 plus 3x3 equals 2. Leaving the middle row alone, 2x2 minus x3 equals minus 8. And then I'm going to add these two rows together, this row and this row, and replace the third row with this sum. So 2 plus minus 2 is 0. Minus x3 plus x3 is just x3. 12 plus minus 8 equals 4. And this is called triangular form because it's a triangle. And what that means is now I can solve it. You know, x3 equals 4. So 2x2 minus 4 equals minus 8. Or x2 equals, if we had a 4 to both sides, x2 equals minus. Uh, minus eight minus four is, oops, did I not? I did multiply through. Minus eight plus, plus four is minus four and divide by two and we get minus two, All right? So if we know x3 is four, we can plug that in here and solve for x2. Once we know that x2 is minus two and x3 is four, we can plug that in here and here and solve for x1. So we have 2x1 plus 8 times minus 2, because that's x2, plus 3 times 4 equals 2. So there's my x3 and my x2. So 2x1 equals, well, we have this 2 on the other side. This is a minus 16. So it goes to the other side as a plus 16. 3 times 4 is 12. And it goes to the other side as minus 12. So it's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. So x1 equals 3. And so now we have our solution. x1 equals 3, x2 equals minus 2, x3 equals 4. So we did these two rows a bunch of rules a bunch of time. We didn't use this one. Um, you often don't need that one, but you can rearrange the order sometimes. Okay. So hopefully you've seen a version of this before, probably with two equations and two unknowns. Um, we can rewrite this, um, right? Just knowing what the coefficients are in the solution numbers, that's really the only thing you need. So we can rewrite it in matrix form, right? So the matrix of coefficients, we'll call that M, that's just all the coefficients uh, written out without any of the um, variables. Uh, the variable vector is X with a little arrow over it. Sometimes they use arrows, sometimes they use bold. Um, and x1, x2, x3, my three variables written there. And then my solution vector is image vector or solution vector. And this should have been underlined. Variable vector, because we're defining what that is. And image vector or solution vector. It doesn't really have a name, but I need to refer to it. So that's the 258. So when we're dealing with a matrix, right, our three rules for um, dealing with the matrix is that two rows can be added to each other and the result can be used to replace one of the rows. A row can be multiplied by a constant and rows can be switched. 
So I want to write the system of equations above as an augmented matrix and then solve it using the row operations. So it's going to be exactly the same. It's just going to use different formatting. So writing this as an augmented matrix means writing down the coefficients, 2, 1, 2, 8, 3, 7, 3, 2, 4, and then a vertical bar, 2, 5, 8. And then we put a matrix bars around it. Right, so inside of square brackets, this is it. So these are all my coefficients. These are my x1 coefficients. These are my x2 coefficients. These are my x3 coefficients. And this is my solution. Um, and so I want to be able to solve this. So what can I do? Well, I can multiply the middle row, multiply r2, and that stands for row 2 by two, and what does that give me? Two, eight, three, two, two, six, two, nope, four, ten, two, seven, four, eight. Which is exactly the same thing we did there, where we just multiplied through by two, we got the coefficients of all of x1 to be the same. And now that the coefficients in this first column are the same, I can clean them out a little bit. So what we're gonna do is we'll take new row two equal to row two minus row one and new row three equal to row three minus row one. It's the same steps that we did here. So we'll take two, eight, three, Two, that's my first row, that's staying the same. My new second row is gonna be the old second row minus R1. So two minus two is zero. Six minus eight is minus two. Four minus three is one. 10 minus two is eight. New third row, two minus two is zero. Seven minus eight is minus one. Four minus three is one. Eight minus two is six. Right? And it's still, it's the same set of numbers in the same organization, right? Except we've just, um, we're dealing with different notation. But the different notation is actually kind of important. So now we're gonna take the new row two to be minus the old row two, and the new row three to be two times the old row three. So the first row stays the same, two, eight, three, two. Second row is zero, two, minus one, minus eight. Third row is zero, minus two, two, 12. Bar separating our coefficients from our answers and our matrix. So there we go. Now we have our um, same set of coefficients we have over the left. And now we make the new third row equal to the second row plus the third row, the old second row plus the old third row. Two, eight, three, two, zero, two, minus one, minus eight. Zero plus zero is zero. Minus two plus minus two is zero. Two plus minus one is one. 12 plus minus eight is four. We put in a bracket. And there we go, right? There's our triangle again. And we remember that this is the X1 column, this is the X2 column, this is the X3 column. So we can reconstitute this as this collection of equations, 2X1 plus 8X2 plus 3X3 equals two. And then we have zero times X1, so we don't need to write that. Two times X2 minus one times X3 equals minus eight. And then zero times x1, we don't need to write that, zero times x2, one times x3 equals four, right? And that's the same thing that we have here. And now we can go back and solve it. So that's row reduction. Um, and that's how you can solve systems of equations by using row reduction. So solving system of linear equations just depends on the coefficients and the solution numbers. Um, so here's another example. 
right? To solve the following system of equations by using an augmented matrix, what would happen if the last equation was equal to two rather than one? So we set up our augmented matrix and we'll have an X1 column, an X2 column, an X3 column, and an answer column. One, two, minus one, one, three, one, 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 minus three, seven, 18, and one. So there's our augmented matrix. What do I wanna do? I wanna deal with first column first, right? So I'm gonna make them all equal to two as an initial um, start. And this kind of notation is kind of condensed. What this means is I'm gonna take the old R1 and multiply by two, and then that will be the new R1. Take the old R3, multiply by two, and that'll be the new R3. So I get two, 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 14, two, three, one, 18, minus two, two, minus six, two. Great, so now I can get rid of all the twos except for the very first one, right? Because I'm trying to get this triangular form here. So I want these three numbers to be zeros, if I can do that. So what am I gonna do? I'm going to take the new R2 to be the old R2 minus R1 and the new R3 to be the old R3 plus R1. And then I'm gonna simplify at the same time R1 by dividing it by half. Yeah, actually I'll do that in the next step. So two, 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 14. R2 minus R1, so two minus two is zero. Three minus two is one. One minus two is minus one. 18 minus 14 is four. And then we add R3 and R2. Two plus minus two is Zero. Hmm. I think I dropped a sign somewhere. Oh no, I'm adding it to the right. Sorry. Two plus minus two is zero. Two plus two is four. Minus six plus two is minus four. And two plus 14 is 16. Okay, so there's that. And now I'm going to simplify a little bit. So we'll go up over here and we'll say. I'm going to make the new R1 equal to one half R1. Always good to keep your matrices tidy. And we'll take the new R3 to be one fourth of the old R3. So one, 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 seven, zero, one, minus one, four, zero, one, minus one. Now this is nice, we like this because we've got two rows that are the same. So we'll make the new R3 equal to R3 minus R2. One, 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 seven, zero, one, minus one, four. One minus one is, well, zero minus zero is zero. One minus one is zero, minus one, minus, minus one. That's also zero and four minus four is zero. So that's actually pretty convenient. Um, and the final last thing I'm gonna do just to completely tidy this up, I'm gonna get rid of this one here. I'm gonna subtract the second row from the first row. So we'll make the new R1 equal to R2, R1 minus R2. Oh, so do I have space? I do have space, good. So, the bottom row is still zero, 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 zero. And then we're leaving the second row alone. And then finally we have one minus zero is one, one minus one is zero, one minus minus one is two, seven minus four is three. So there we have our solution. So we can turn this back into equations. Those are my coefficients. This is my answers thing. So the equations are gonna be x1 plus two x3 equals three. 
And the second equation is x2 times 1 minus x3 equals 4. And the last equation is 0 equals 0. So there's actually infinitely many choices that you can make to solve this. Every choice that you make of x3 is going to give you a different answer for x1 and x2. And so there's actually infinitely many solutions. OK, but this is a very pre precarious um, solution in a way. And we'll talk a little bit more about this solution in a second. Um, what would happen if the last equation was equal to 2 rather than 1? So if this was a 2, that would make this, right? We multiply by 2, so that would make this a 4. And then we added 14 and 2 to get this 16. So if we add 14 and 4 instead, we'd have here an 18. And then if we divided through by 4, right? 16 divided by 4 gave us this 4. But if we divided through by 4, that would make this 4.5. And then finally, when we did the subtraction, instead of a zero here, we'd end up with 0 0.5. And so our three equations would end up being x1 plus 2x3 equals 3, x2 minus x3 equals 4, and 0 equals 0 0.5. Always false. Whatever your three numbers you pick, you'll never get 0 equal to 0 0.5. And so there's no solution in that case. So we see something here. In solving these equations, we can have no solutions. We can have infinitely many solutions. Every choice of x3 gives you another one. Or in the very first example, we just had one. So we can write the solution of the previous example with a parameter. So our solution was x1 plus 2x3 equals 3. So I'll just rewrite that down. And then x2 minus x3 equals, what was that equal to? 4. x2 minus x3 equals 4. Right? And then 0 equals 0, but we don't really need that. So we'll take a parameter. And usually we take t, or it could be s. We'll set x3 equal to t. That makes this x1 equals 3 minus 2 times t. This makes this x2 equals 4 plus t, and then x3 equals t. Every choice of t, whatever number you want t to be, 0, 1, pi, minus 342, will give you a different solution. But we can rewrite these as vectors. Right? We'll just write it as a little matrix. And we'll see how matrices work. But what I want to show here is I can split this matrix into two separate matrices by at the minus signs and the plus signs. So 3, 4, 0, plus minus 2t, t, t. t. And finally, you can write it like this, because the t is common to each of these terms. So when I factor it, I can factor it out. And we'll see how to do multiplication of matrices and vectors in a bit. But we can rewrite this solution in this way. And we have this particular set, this particular vector here. Remember that this is x1 is the top row, x2 is the bottom middle row, and x3 the top. So 3 plus t times minus 2 is x1. 4 plus t times 1 is x2. 0 plus t times 1 is x3. Okay, so 
what we've got here then is we've got this set of numbers, this vector multiplied by t. And a very interesting things happen. If we take this vector, x1, x2, and x3, and we plug it into the original set of equations, but with the right side equal to zero, this is actually a solution to this. So if we take x1 equals to minus two, x2 equals to one, x3 equals to one, what do we get? Minus two plus one plus one equals zero. Two times minus two is minus four plus three times one is three plus x3 is one equals zero. Minus, minus two is two plus x2, which is one, minus three times x3, that's a minus three, that equals zero. So this thing solves the same coefficients, but set equal to zero. And that will turn out to be really important. Um, we'll see the same phenomena occurring in solving linear differential equations. So we can switch rows, can we switch columns? And the answer is not really, right? So these two rows are the same, these two systems are the same. We switched the first row and the second row, but it left all the variables, okay? Right, and all the variables were left in the same column. The problem with switching columns is that, right, we think of this as being x1, this as being x2, um, and then this is your answers. So what are your answers? Here, x1 equals three and x2 equals four, right? Because the equations here are one times x1 plus one times x2 equals seven, two times x1 plus three times x2 equals 18. And you can just check three plus four is seven, six plus 12 is 18. This one, right, this is my x1, this is my x2, this is my answers. What we've done here is we've just switched the columns. And if you solve this one, right, this is the equation x1 plus x2 equals seven, three x1 plus, 2x2 equals 18. And now x1 has to be 4 and x2 has to be 3. So you technically can't switch the columns because you're switching around the, um, the variables. So we don't want to switch columns. We can switch rows around because it's just switching the order that you write the equations in. Switching around columns means switching around the variables. So we generally don't want to do that. We're going to see that the matrices have a lot of properties, many of which don't depend on the order of the columns. But when we're trying to solve for various numbers, we don't want to switch the columns because we're interested in whatever the solutions are uh, for the particular variables. So we don't want to get those out of order.